If you're listening to Florida Commercial Real Estate Radio Show, I am your host, Doug Dennison. We are broadcasting from beautiful St. Augustine, Florida, the nation's oldest city at WFOY, 1240 AM Studios. Our co-host is Jerry Anderson, CCIM, from Barry Van Ness in the Palm Beach County, Florida area. We've also got another caller. Jerry, are you on? Uh, Jerry's here. Oh, yes, sir, Doug. Okay, all right. Let's get our next caller on. Good morning. You're on the air. Yes. How you doing? This is um, Matt Rodolante. I'm actually the next uh, guest. Well, very good. Uh, you're on the air, Matt, and thank you so much. Jerry is on the line, too. Jerry, say hi. Good morning, Matt. So we went from north to south today, Doug, because we just had Tom Morgan, who was in Jacksonville, and now we have Matt Rodolante, who is all the way down into Miami. So we went from the northeast side of the end of the state to the southeast side. Well, very good. Matt, uh, how did you get into commercial real estate, if you could? Well, similar to Tom, I guess uh, my family's been in it for a pretty long while. I've, I've been uh, you know, doing commercial real estate most of my life, uh, fourth generation, you know, Miami commercial real estate family. And, um, you know, I went and got my master's and worked out in Chicago for a while, but then ended up getting back into the, the family business. And it's been uh, it's been great so far. Well, very nice. And, and you're in the Miami area and take care of that part of the the state. Um, we've been talking about uh, uh, ports, but Jerry, you you get into this. Uh, this is an exciting uh, deal in regards to ports and how it affects commercial real estate uh, all over the state of Florida. Well, it really is, Doug, and, uh, you know, we had Tom on a moment ago who's almost finished with the CCIM. I, I need to brag about Matt a little bit here. Not only does he have a master's degree and, you know, educated in that regard from the University of Miami in, in finance, but he also is one of those rare individuals in our industry that has not only a CCIM designation, which we've heard about today, but also SIOR designation. And there are not that many that have both designations, SIOR, SIOR focused mostly on industrial and office. So when we talk to a guy like Matt today and we ask him questions about the effect of the port on Miami, he is a fellow that, as he said, been doing this for a long time. So I hope our listeners uh, listen carefully because this is a guy that does understand the market. Matt, what we've been talking about today earlier, and I think maybe even hopefully we're listening to the show, we've really been talking about how important the ports are to a state like Florida in terms of their capacity, their competitiveness, the ability to accelerate and create economic growth. And I know you are practically, I mean, you, you're knee-deep in it, <laughs> no pun intended, here in Miami, and you've been following all of this for quite a while. So help, uh, help our listeners understand what kind of an effect economically, and then, of course, also commercial real estate specifically, does having a port like the Port of Miami have? Because most of us just think about ports and the cruises, but there's a lot more to it, isn't there? Yes, Jerry, certainly there is. Um, you know, Miami, one of the biggest economic engines here is is Port Miami, and uh, we do have the cruise ships as well. They're, they're definitely a big economic engine down here, and, um, you know, very similar to the hotels that we have down here. There's a lot of consumer, you know, goods that are consumed by these, uh, you know, great economic engines that we have down here. But, you know, with, with the seaport, what you, have, what you also get is, a, you know, a lot of freight forwarding business, a lot of uh, international trade. You know, some of our larger trade partners are, you know, China and Brazil. And, um, you know, Miami's, you know, consistently ranked at one of the, as one of the top ports in the nation, you know, for those... Um, you know, you know, containers uh, being shipped and and that nature, and you know, Miami is also, you know, responsible for uh, about 176,000 jo- jobs per year, and it has an economic impact of about 18 billion. Um, so, it, it, the seaport is really, you know, a big factor here in Miami. Now, what about the deepening of it? We, we've heard a lot about that. That's been quite the project in, uh, in the port there, hasn't it? Yeah. O- overall, there's about $25 billion in infrastructure projects throughout South Florida. Um, you know, 
the state, I think, tends to look at it from a uh, holistic point of view in regards to, um, you know, planning for the future. And, um, you know, Miami was one of the first ports that, that got earmarked for some funding to uh, expand the port operations to be able to accommodate the new post-Panamax era. Uh, Post-Panamax is essentially the widening of the Panama Canal to accommodate ships of larger than, you know, as large as 18,000 TEU ships. And um, those ships are basically like floating cities. I mean, they're, they're very, very large, you know, just as large as some of the largest cruise ships out there. And they're very impressive when they, they come into port. Uh, currently, you know, Miami is at a depth of 42 feet at high tide, and we're going to be dredging to a depth of 52 feet. There has been about $75 million earmarked from the state of Florida to uh, provide that support. And, um, you know, that, that dredging project is underway. Well, well how does that... Yeah, go ahead, Doug. Go well, ahead. I would just... Uh, I was... Just thinking about, uh, you know, how Miami has just gone gangbusters, uh, uh, at least residentially, and I want to get your take and and also your feel about uh, kind of your crystal ball about Miami's marketplace uh, in the commercial area and overall, because, again, I've been hearing a lot of things saying, my gosh, Miami is going up and up and up and has just recovered from this uh, uh, you know, this terrible lull in the market, but, you know, what do you think it's doing and, and what do you think it's going to do? Yeah, I mean, overall, Miami is, is a very resilient market. Um, you know, we're uh, we're a frontier market down here and uh, we're a logistical node, so it, it really uh, gives us a different look and feel than, than the rest of the United States in, in a lot of respects. Um, you know, when we did have the the condo boom and you know things kind of fell off the cliff there a little bit they were you know some experts that were saying we had a 10-year supply of condos and uh, we ended up selling out of those in about two years Um, you've already got another 75 buildings being planned and about you know I think about six to eight of those are already breaking ground Um, you know we have a large uh, private investors like Squire Group, who are you know breaking ground on City Center, that's going to be a 1.5 million square foot project, mixed use project downtown Miami on Brickell. Um, you know, very premier project. Some of the you know newest architectural designs being uh, implemented there. And um, you also have uh, the tunnel project that's you know akin to the seaport. They're going to be you know uh, doing a tunnel from Dodge Island know over to 395 so that you know trucks can leave the port of miami and, and arrive in atlanta without hitting a single traffic light which is you know something that our port director bill johnson is very proud of because he was the one that really you know spearheaded that um and then you also have uh, another 50 million dollar project that has been done in conjunction with flagler the the railroad company to essentially light up the rail coming out of the port again and they've also uh, been in the process of developing an inland port, um, you know, closer to the airport west market and the Hialeah market to, uh, you know, be able to accommodate these containers and, and, you know, really, you know, instead of just relying on the trucks to, to have rail be, uh, you know, a secondary uh, alternative to the, the trucking of the containers, you know, further north. Nice, nice. Do you have a listing that you want to talk about? Because uh, I know you're very active in that area and uh, want to promote one particular property for us. Yeah, I mean, in, in you know, our, our office does, you know, all the, the, the asset types. But uh, I, in specific, you know, as you know, as you can see with the, the SIOR stands for Society of Industrial and Office Brokers. So I've been more of an industrial uh, broker myself. Okay. And, um, you know, we are working on a pretty large transaction right now. It's a 150,000-square-foot freezer uh, dock warehouse warehouse location uh, located in the the Hialeah market, you know, kind of central Miami. And, um, you know, we're seeing a lot of freezer demand um, in Miami as a result of, you know, some of 
the logistical infrastructure projects that are going on. Give us some uh, some indication of uh, who might be somebody that would use that kind of facility. Well, you you obviously have the the regular freezer players who are are more like you know freight forwarders. They uh, they're consolidators. They they kind of handle the operations for small businesses, and they'll rent out space on a per pallet basis. Um, sometimes you'll see longer contracts, but they they typically you know, have, you know, customers from anywhere from 100, you know, pallets per month to, uh, you know, upwards of 1,000. So uh, then you also have, you know, the actual users. You know, once a user gets to a certain uh, size, the economies of scale change, and they start looking for their own space. And so, um, you know, we, we could accommodate probably several users on the site or one big user or potentially, you know, one of the uh, consolidators, you know. So, um, you know, we're, we're actively, you know, marketing the property for both of those uh, target markets. Nice, nice. Jerry, uh, please ask more questions. I think I might have interrupted you for a second there. Well, I, I just saw the other day, Matt, you made reference to that. I just saw the other day another condo project, 250 units going up on Brickell Avenue. And, you know, my question you did address a little bit, but if you don't mind, talk to the topic of all the experts were saying, oh, my gosh, we've got a 20, uh, we have a 10-year supply of condominiums in, in Florida. But what was the influence, you know, that created the, the ability of those things to be taken off the market, sold, absorbed, if you will, in two years. I mean, were people coming from in in the states? Were they coming from outside the country? I mean, what took place to suck up that supply? Yeah, it, it's it's really been a combination of, of several things. I think Miami has become somewhat of a uh, a safety haven for a lot of capital. Uh, we're a big banking center. Uh, we have a very nice climate, you know, it's a subtropical climate, very unique in the United States. And so a lot of people feel they can come here, you know, there's a lot of capital that comes here, um, a lot of offshore money, and, um, you know, people get to have their toys here as well. You know, you can have a big boat, you can have a really nice car, um, not worry about the, you know, the salt from the snow, uh, you know, getting up under the carriage of the car and ruining it. So there's a lot of benefits to being in Miami just because of the, you know, the sunny weather that we have and, um, you know, and having the entertainment and some of the other amenities that Miami offers. But, um, you know, once you have that capital in place and everybody's here, so you, you tend to have people that want to do their business close to home. Real estate, as you mentioned at the beginning of the program, Jerry, is a local, uh, you know, uh, market. And... You know, so people tend to want to do business when you're when you're building a building. I mean, you really need to visit the building on a regular basis to make sure the the contractors are, are following their contracts and providing you the materials that you requested, and, and make sure the project is being built to the specs that uh, you know are, are required by code. So, um, so that, that you tend to have a you know a premium being paid for real estate here because people want to be able to develop and do things here, and um, and that kind of builds upon itself. Um, that demand has been so strong that we're seeing uh, a Latin American model where the actual purchasers of the condo come in and, and they actually finance the project for the developer. So the developer is able to, you know, forego working with the bank and, and get contracts and monies directly from the buyers. And as the project, you know, reaches certain thresholds, you know, more money is deposited up until the time that the CO is delivered and the last payments are made, which is a very, very unique uh, form of financing that we've, we've seen that in Latin America because there's not as much you know, banking and financing for these types of projects in, in, in those areas. But Miami is, is, you know, a couple of the projects are, are enjoying that, uh, you know, that form of financing, including the one that well, a related group is working on. I've mentioned this a couple of times on our Florida commercial real estate shows, how different the state of Florida is, and certainly... From your standpoint, you're in a market that's very vibrant. I'm going to brag about your office a little bit. Your office in 2012 literally doubled its volume from 2011, whereas over in the southwest part of the state, we were not experiencing that uh, that same growth. 
Is it too late? Here's the, here's the essence of my question. Is it too late for investors to get involved in Miami or in Miami commercial real estate, or are there still opportunities there? And if so, what are they? Yes, Jerry. Miami is actually a very good, it's a very good timing to get into the Miami market. I mean, it could have been better timing in 2009, but, uh, you know, a lot of people were on the sidelines at that point. But we're, we're st- we still have some excellent values. What you've seen is the core markets have, uh, you know, always been resilient. And, you know, maybe oh, from 2010, 2011, you saw the secondary markets, you know, getting uh, a lot of activity. And, uh, you know, now in 2012, 2013, the, there's, there's a lot of little gems in those tertiary markets where you have, you know, great income potential. Uh, you can buy products still below, well below replacement costs. Um, you know, with good access, good visibility. Um, you know, we have retail projects available, retail land. You know, development in Miami has really taken off, and it's across the board, you know, with all asset classes. There's about 6 million square feet of industrial product under uh, construction. Um, I've personally seen about, you know, tw- close to 20 new retail projects taking place. Um, you know, there's several condos, there's, you know, multiple apartment complexes throughout the South Florida area under construction, and, um, and you, you, a lot of people have been talking bubble again, you know, at our CCIM Outlook Conference, there was one, uh, you know, headline speaker that we had, Jack McCabe, who, who was, you know, saying exactly that, that we're, we're repeating the, the bubble, but from the standpoint that my family's been doing this, you know, for four generations, and we've seen multiple cycles, um, you know, I would say, you know, we're, we're probably going to, you know, Miami's poised to really become an international global city, whereas before we were more like a sleepy, you know, town in the in the 70s and 80s, and now, um, you know, we have the Performing Arts Center, we have the port, we have the airport, we have a, you know, great education with the University of Miami and our, and our uh, FIU and a lot of the other schools in town, so it's, it's, uh, you know, it's become a very dynamic city with a lot more than, than just the, the sunny climate. And um, so I, I think, you know, it's a great time to invest, um, you know, and there's opportunities that abound. You know, we're still seeing some activity through the distressed situations out there. Uh, you know, some companies are still faltering. Some investors are still, you know, trying to, uh, you know, make ends meet. So those create opportunities for, you know, people that do have the capital and are willing to, uh, you know, maybe assume a little bit of risk, you know, do a little bit of value add and, uh, you know, really get the return for it. Well, what do you think, Doug? Do you think Matt Rodolante is proud of the city there, Miami? Oh, <laughs> my <laughs> gosh. Uh, he, he just wrote a, a, a television ad, I think. He, he did a fine job. Hey, Matt, uh, I know that you need to go back and uh, uh, deal with your clients, and, and you, again, you've been very successful, but uh, before uh, we get your contact information, Jerry, is there anything else that you'd like to ask Matt? No, I bragged about him uh, before, so I would just suggest that in terms of Dade County real estate, Matt's office, uh, directly through Matt here, can certainly be of help to you, so listen carefully as here comes his contact information. All right. Give, give us uh, the contact information, your phone and your email, Matt, if you would. Yeah, our, our office is in Doral. We have, a, you know, like I mentioned, with agents in all asset categories, so we're able to service a lot of different property types throughout the county. And uh, our office phone number is 305-235-1500. And um, you can reach us here at any time. We're open, uh, you know, seven, five days a week. And um, if you want to reach us on the weekend, you know, I'll even give you my cell phone number, which is 305-490-6526. And um, we'll be more than happy to answer any questions you have about, about, about the market down here. Very good. Hey, Matt, thank you so much for being on the show, taking time out on a Friday. You have a wonderful weekend. And, again, thank you for being on the show. Thank you, Jerry. Thank you, Doug. You guys are great. All right. Bye-bye now. All right, Jerry, uh, uh, again, two great guests uh, telling us about ports. Uh, uh, Miami always excites me, and it, and, it, and it lends itself to 
this topic that I've been thinking about. We talked about last week in regards to the fact that California and Florida, you know, usually uh, get the big rise in values and then take the big drops in values. And, you know, I just remember 2007 in that area going downtown Miami, seeing all of these cranes, these building cranes, just completely idle, and I'm talking, you know, 30, 40 of them not being used, not working, not going up and down. And the press, you know, national press usually take, you know, this is this is exciting news for them. They're going to they're going to shove it out throughout the entire uh, country. I just want to know now that Miami is doing so well, are they also getting the kind of push from national media that uh, might help? Uh, people like Matt and, and Sperry Van Ness. Well, I think the press looks for the extremes, <laughs> uh, yeah. I mean, look, reporters they, reporters want to write at either extreme. And when, a, when a, an economy in a particular market, especially real, commercial real estate, sort of bounces along steadily, you don't read much about it. I mean, right. you never read much about the, the economy, uh, commercial real estate economy of Indiana or Ohio. And the reason for that is they don't have the ups and they don't have the downs. Okay. But in, in California and Texas and Florida, we do. And, you know, there's Matt. You just heard him say some people are saying that it's a bubble. Now, here's how I interpret that. What Matt just said is some people are saying we're coming back way too fast, way too, way, you know. So it's, it's that roller coaster ride that uh, people get nervous about. And, you know, just like the stock market, yeah. you cannot time commercial real estate yeah yeah uh, i had a question the other day from uh, a client as you know i travel the state all the time because we have offices throughout the state right and i had a, and i was in tampa and i was with a client and they said oh my gosh i really missed the bottom and i said well it's interesting you think you knew where the bottom was because <laughs> i've been in this i've been in this business 35 years i live and breathe it we have over 20 offices in the state of florida I travel 2,000 miles a week when I make the tour, and I cannot tell you where the bottom is in any particular market specifically. Mm -hmm. What I can tell you, though, is that there's plenty of opportunity, and that's what we heard Matt say. So I think commercial real estate in Florida, we have a, a huge benefit right now. We're, we're having a phenomenal year at Spirit of Venice, and our, our competitors are having phenomenal years as well mm -hmm. compared to 2009. Much of our activity is are, are coming from is coming from out of the country. Uh, we have a lot of Canadian activity. Uh, we just sold an eight million dollar parcel in um, Orlando, from, and they're building medical buildings. And that was an out of the, that was a purchase made by someone out of the country. Mm -hmm. Now they're going to have local partners, but that purchase was made by folks outside the country. So it's not only just folks from the Midwest coming down and investing in a state where we don't have a personal income tax. It's also capital coming from outside the United States of America. Why do you think Spurry Van Ness is doing so well? Because under your leadership in Florida, I mean, the numbers of sales, the number of advisors have grown. What do they see in Spurry Van Ness that is drawing uh, new people to your company? I think it's the entrepreneurial platform. Spirit of Ness is, uh, you know, has been uh, for quite a while now one of the top ten commercial real estate companies in the country. It is uh, our competitors are very good competitors. We love competing with them, but all of our structure is a little bit different. Uh, the largest commercial real estate company in the in the world is CB Richard Ellis or CBRE. They are a corporately owned operation. A couple of other corporately owned operations are, of course, Newmark Knight Frank, which is Mark Gravinellis. You also have Marcus Millichap. But there's some platforms like Spiri Van Ness that are much more entrepreneurial. Spiri Van Ness is an extremely collaborative platform. Our advisors work together, and yet the offices are owned locally. Matt Rodolafe owns the office in Miami. That's an independently owned and operated office on the, on the, on built on the foundation and the platform of an international company called Spiri Van Ness International, which is basically licenses to Rodolante 
its tools, its systems, its resources, its platform, its technology to connect those advisors all over the country. We have about 850 advisors in 150 locations from coast to coast. Well, it's growing, and certainly Florida is just uh, booming in under your leadership, and, and so kudos to you. How do people get a hold of you, Jerry? The easiest way to get a hold of anybody involved with Spirit of NS here in Florida is to go to our website, which is, which is svnflorida.com. S is in Sierra, V is in Victor, N is in November, Florida.com. And on that website, you'll see all of our offices here in the state of Florida. You'll be able to direct, uh, connect with our advisors. You'll be able to see their listings. You'll be able to see our activity. Our blog is there. That's the center of the universe to connect with SVN Florida. Well, very nice. Jerry, thank you again for co-hosting this show. I want to thank you for, uh, for this opportunity, and uh, you did a great job. Very good, sir. We'll see you next week. All right. You take care, my friend. Take care.